Hello, welcome to Math Defined. I'm Susie. Today, I'm gonna to talk about greatest common factor, more commonly known as the GCF, and I'm gonna be showing you the ladder method that is used to find it. So let's get started. All right, let's start by looking at the definition of greatest common factor. The greatest common factor, or GCF, is the largest shared factor for a pair or set of numbers. And before we move on, let's go ahead and review what factors are. Factors are numbers that are multiplied together to equal products. So let's look at a quick example of that. If I take the numbers three and five and I multiply them together, those numbers are now called factors because they're being multiplied. And factors will equal products. So when I take the two factors, three and five, and I multiply them together, I get a product of 15. And on the reverse side, I can also say that five and three are factors of 15. And in greatest common factor, that's what we're gonna be looking for. We're gonna be looking for shared factors of numbers. Now, before we move on to using the ladder method to find the greatest common factor, there's one more important thing that I would like to talk to you about. And that is that the greatest common factor of any pair or set of numbers is always less than or equal to the numbers in the set. And as we practice this, I'm going to make you aware of this and this is going to make a little bit more sense. So let's just get started finding the greatest common factor using the ladder method. So we're gonna start off by looking for the greatest common factor of 16 and 40. So what we do is we start off by drawing an L and inside the L we go ahead and put the numbers that we're looking at 16 and 40 and then to the left of the L on the outside of the L we're going to be writing a shared factor of both 16 and 40. So a shared factor of 16 and 40 would be the number 4. So now I'm going to continue down my ladder by drawing another L. And now inside of this L, I'm going to write the other factor that when multiplied to four is going to give me 16, and also the other factor that when multiplied by four is going to give me 40. So I think that four times four gives me my 16, and four times 10 gives me 40. Then I look at four and 10 and I think, well, what is a shared factor of four and 10? And that would be two. Then I continue down my ladder and I think, well, two times two is four and two times five is 10. Then I look at two and five and I think, well, the only shared factor of two and five would be one. And once I reach one, I know that I'm done. So my greatest common factor is found by multiplying the shared factors which are on the left of the ladder. So I would multiply four times two times one and I would get eight. So the greatest common factor of 16 and 40 is eight. And you will also notice that eight is less than 16 and it's less than 40. All right, now let's find the greatest common factor of 30 and 60. So again, I'm gonna draw my L. I'm going to place my numbers inside 30 and 60. I'm going to think of a shared factor of both 30 and 60. So I'm thinking of six. So I'm gonna continue down my ladder. And then I know that six times five is 30 and six times 10 is 60. Then I look at five and 10, and I know they share a common factor of five. So I continue down my ladder, and I know five times one is five, and five times two is 10. And now I'm looking at one and two, and I can see that the only shared factor between one and two is one. So once I reach one, I'm done, and I just multiply those shared factors together, and that's going to give me the greatest common factor of 30. And again, I look at 30 and I say, well, is 30 equal to 30? Yes, that's okay. And 30 is less than 60 and that's okay. So I know that I'm good. All right, let's practice a couple more. So let's find the greatest common factor of 42 and 63. 
So remember, we start off by drawing our L for ladder. We place our numbers inside the L, so 42 and 63. And then I think of any shared factor of 42 and 63, so I'm thinking of 7. Draw my L again. And then I think, well, 7 times 6 is 42, and 7 times 9 is 63. Then I look at 6 and 9, and I think, well, they share a common factor of 3. So I draw my ladder, continue down. 3 times 2 is 6, and 3 times 3 is 9. And then I look at 2 and 3, and I think, well, they only share a common factor of 1. So my greatest common factor is found by multiplying those shared factors on the left. 7 times 3 times 1 is 21. So the greatest common factor of 42 and 63 is 21. And so remember, I need to make sure that that GCF is less than or equal to my numbers in my set. So 21 is less than 42 and it's less than 63, so I know I'm good. All right, let's try 14 and 84. So again, we're gonna draw our L. We're going to place our numbers inside 14 and 84. I'm going to think of any shared factor of 14 and 84, and I'm thinking of seven. So I'm gonna continue down my ladder. Seven times two is 14. Seven times 12 is 84. Then I look at two and 12. And I say, well, they share a common factor of 2, so I'm going to continue down my ladder. 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 times 6 is 12. And then I look at 1 and 6, and I see the only shared factor between them is 1. So I've reached 1, and I'm done. So now I just multiply those shared factors together to get a product of 14. Actually, that's wrong. To get a, It is a product, but it's also the greatest common factor. So the greatest common factor of 14 and 84 is 14. And remember, we want to make sure that our greatest common factor is either less than or equal to the numbers in my set. So 14 is equal to the number 14 in my set, and that's fine. And 14 is less than 84, and that's fine as well. So I hope you found this video to be helpful. I hope you have a better understanding of what greatest common factor is and how to use the ladder method to find it. And if you would like to see more of my videos, please become a subscriber and don't forget to click on that notification bell so that you'll be notified as my videos come out. And I'd also like to hear your comments as well. So if you like this video, hey, please leave me a comment letting me know. So again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.